when it comes to investing, we often look at diversification by filling up our portfolios with a lot of different stocks. Often, a very good amount is between 20 to 30 different companies to make up a well-diversified portfolio. For a beginner, it can be harder to reach that number initially. Somewhere in thinking about that, I wondered, what would I do if I was only allowed to purchase 10 companies? That is a very interesting question, and we'll begin to answer it right now. For these stocks, we are going to stick within Canada, though an American edition of this challenge could very well be in the future. We are going to build this small portfolio with as much diversification as we can, with a strong emphasis on being as recession-proof as we can get it. We are also trying to find stocks with some amount of both passive income and growth. This list is not in any specific order, but rather sorted by sector or function in the portfolio. So without any further ado, let's start with our first pick. For our first stock, we will start off in the resources sector. Canada has so many resources, and this is a sector set to become very profitable as the government intends to invest in developing our ability to produce critical materials for the EV and technology industry. There are a lot of great minerals to invest in. If I also want a wee bit of a hedge against recession, I need to be thinking of gold. So, for my first pick, I am looking at Barrick Gold Corporation with a ticker of ABX. They are one of the world's largest gold producers operating nine mines in North America, South America, Australia, and Africa. One of the more important data sets I'm looking at for the recession-proof portfolio is beta. Beta is a number that gives you an indication as to where that company is in comparison to the average on the S&P 500. A high beta means that they are more volatile. A low beta means that they are less volatile. A beta of one means they hit the average exactly. In the case of our gold stock, their beta comes in at an amazing 0.0. 0.03, meaning they have considerably less volatility than the average stock. They have a nice market cap of $59.9 billion, so it goes without saying that their pockets are more than deep enough to weather a recession. They do have a dividend yield of 1.777%, which is paid out quarterly in the amount of $0.10 cents American per share. Keep in mind there will be conversion fees on this one as it gets converted to Canadian currency. When we look at their growth in the last year, their share rose from $27 to $28 dollars and 65 cents for a return on investment of 6.1 percent and adding in the dividend we get a total return of 7.87 percent which is not too bad for a gold stock considering they are more of a store of value for our next pick, we are going to look at the financial sector, and this one was a harder pick as really any of the big banks would or could have taken the top spot. I did though settle on Toronto Dominion Bank. With a ticker of TD, their beta came in at 0.85, which is great as it is less volatile than the average, and that is never a bad thing. TD is one of the top two banks in Canada, and they have been really expanding their influence into the United States with banks along the entire eastern seaboard. Their diversification into the international market makes TD TD a very solid recession-proof blue chip stock. They have an awesome market cap of $167 billion. They have a dividend yield of 3.837%, which is paid out quarterly in the amount of $0.89 cents per share. When we look at their growth in the last year, their share rose from $83.40 to $92.79 for an ROI of 11.3%, and adding in the dividend, we get a total return of 15.17%, which is pretty fantastic. Up next, we have my pick from the energy sector, and this one was also a really tough one. I passed over our only dividend king for our next dividend king as I selected 48-year dividend increasing aristocrat Fortis with a ticker of FTS. Their beta is a simply stunning 0.12. And seeing that people need energy in a recession, you really can't get more recession-proof than an energy company. Fortis owns and operates 10 electric companies across North America and in the Caribbean as well. They have an awesome market cap of $29.8 billion. They have a dividend yield of 3.423%, which is paid out quarterly in the amount of $0.53.5 cents per share. When we look at their growth in the last year, their share rose from $54.51 to $6. $62.51 for an ROI of 14.7% and adding in the dividend we get a total return of 18.12% which is more than a match for inflation. 
Now, this sector is one that may cause the most disagreements, as we all have our favorite real estate plays. For this one, I chose a REIT for the higher dividends, and I wanted one that has a little growth too. So with a goal of overall stability, I went for CT Real Estate Investment Trust with a ticker of CRT.UN. They have a beta of 1.01, so they are pretty much at the average for volatility. This is a retail properties trust that was formed by Canadian Tire for leasing properties to their stores and any subsidiaries, like for example, Mark's Work Warehouse. They have an awesome market cap of $1.9 billion. They have a dividend yield of 4.728%, which is paid out monthly in the form of seven cents per share. When we look at their growth in the last year, their share rose from $16.51 to $17.75 for an ROI of 7.3%. And adding in the dividend, we get a total return of 12%, which is very good for a REIT. My next sector, though it is more of a category, is cryptocurrency. Needless to say, I wanted to get some exposure to Bitcoin as my other possible store of value. For this, I also wanted to raise my dividends a little, so I went for the Purpose Bitcoin Yield ETF with a ticker of BTCY.B. This will be one of the exceptions as I do not have a beta for them, but we know where it is a spot Bitcoin ETF that it is going to be the most volatile of my picks. However, it is fine with this ETF as the managers of the fund are using covered calls to make me dividends no matter what the price is doing. This ETF has a market cap of 12.9 million, so it is probably the scariest pick on this list, but I do have high conviction in Bitcoin, so that will carry me past any concerns. Their dividend yield is 14.74 percent which is paid out monthly in the amount of 7.7 .7 cents per unit we do not have a lot of growth data on this etf as it was ruled out in november i can tell you that it has gone down just like bitcoin however if bitcoin finally starts acting like a store of value it could mean some good growth and if not we have the dividends now let's move to the tech sector. And I know you are probably thinking I am ready to pick Shopify, but you would be wrong. Instead, I am leaning towards Constellation Software with a ticker of CSU. They have a wonderful beta score of 0.78. They are a bit of an interesting company in that they develop and customize software for public and private sector markets. They acquire, manage, and build vertical specific businesses. That means that they cater their goods and services specific to the industry and that company's specific needs. They have an awesome market cap of $42.8 billion. They have a dividend yield of 0.252%, which is paid out quarterly in the amount of $1 USD per share. When we look at their growth in the last year, their share rose from $1,805.01 to $2,021.87 for an ROI of 12%. And adding in the dividend, we get a total return of 12.25%, which is not bad considering the hit tech has taken in the last few months. At their recent all-time high, they were sitting at $2,382.24. Now with a share price this high, thankfully they are available on Wealthsimple as a fractional share. For my transportation sector pick, it is a no-brainer when I return with Canadian National Railway with a ticker of CNR. They have a very respectable beta of 0.64, and as a key part of our supply chain, there is nothing more recession-proof. My last video was a complete breakdown of CNR, so definitely check that out if you missed it. I will link it below. They have an awesome market cap of $104.96 billion. They have a dividend yield of 1.939%, which is paid out quarterly in the amount of 73.3 cents per share. When we look at their growth in the last year, their share rose from $133.32 to $151.08 for an ROI of 12.33%. And adding in that dividend, we get a total return of 15.27%, which is absolutely awesome. And next we move to the healthcare sector and I chose Enlore Healthcare Group Incorporated with a ticker of AND. Their beta is 0.40, which is really good. They are an investment holding company investing in specialized transport within the medical field, such as temperature control transport. They have a market cap of $1.87 billion. They have a dividend yield of 0.536%, which is paid out quarterly in the amount of six cents per share. When we look at their growth in the last year, their share rose from $36.77 to $44.74 for an ROI of 21.7%. And adding in that dividend, we get a total return of 22.2%, which is not too bad at all. 
So we have two spots left and my next spot is my pick for the communication sector and I went with BCE Incorporated. With a ticker of BCE, Bell's Beta is a wonderful looking 0.34 which looks like the perfect amount of stability to me. They are one of Canada's big three carriers and they hold a 30% market share of Canada's telecommunication market. They have a market cap of $62.2 billion. They have a dividend yield of 5.388% which is paid out quarterly in the amount of 92 cents per share. When we look at their growth, in the last year their share price rose from $58.20 to $68.30 for an ROI of 17.4% and adding in the dividend we get a total return of 22.78% which is a very respectable return. For the final pick, it is my wildcard stock, and it will come as a surprise to no one that I have chosen GNU EIT Income Fund with a ticker of EIT.UN for the last spot in my 10. Their beta is 1.31, which is a little above the average, but really not by much. They are an income fund that invests in the energy sector and the financial sector only as it supports the energy sector. They have a market cap of $2 billion. They have a dividend yield of 8.627%, which is paid out monthly in the amount of $0.10 cents per share. When we look at their growth, in the last year, their share rose from $11.62 to $13.91 for an ROI of 19.7%. And adding in the dividend, we get a total return of 28.33%, which is everything I could ask for in my wild card pick. Okay, now that we have this team, I think we need to do a little more with them. It is all fine and dandy that I break these down for you, but this time I'm going to track these stocks for the next year. And I will provide an update each month as to how they are doing. So, how this will work, I will track them with a $1,000 initial investment in each of them. We will let them grow through the year and reinvest any dividends as we go. It will be fun to see how much that $10,000 grows into. I would also like to do an American version of this, and in fact, tune in next week for that. I will set the initial tracking time for that one to match this one, so we can have a Canada versus the United States battle royale. It should be a lot of fun. I do need to point out that if you are thinking of investing in any of these, just remember I am not a financial advisor and am only the beginning of your research. Your financial advisor is the end. If you guys loved this video, be excited. There is way more to come. Until then, why not watch one of these videos? And before you jump into that content, be sure to like and subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you in the next video.